So let's get into the first one. So to make things clear to our viewers, none of us actually grew up really watching or admiring these movies. I only saw the first one. Let's talk about it. So Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery came out in 1997. Jay Roach directed all of these, uh, who he did a lot of comedies at the time. Uh, he did Meet the Parents. I think he also did the sequels to those. And later he dove into more serious movies like Trumbo and Bombshell, which were nominated for Oscars. So I only saw this movie, International Man of Mystery, when I was like 18. And not because mm -hmm. my parents were ever preventing me from watching it. Just because I never got around to it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it was... So basically in this one, um, Austin Powers, he starts out in the 1960s. And then he gets frozen in cryo sleep, right? And then he has to come back 30 years later, like in the present day, in order yeah. to fight Dr. Evil. Um, so let's get into, first of all, Mike Myers' performance as um, as both Austin Powers and Dr. Evil, and just the character of Austin Powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think Austin Powers is like, he's like a, like, like a cultural figure at this point. Like, the most thing I remember about him was more so like when people would like dress up as Halloween or like, it was always like, uh, not so much what happened in the movie. But more so like the what Austin Power represents kind of thing, and um, I think I think he's hilarious. I think that you know the accent, like I just I don't get it. I don't get it. But it was it was a moment for sure, and I think Doctor Evil is like iconic, especially what later on with um, the little youngin and. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just funny seeing like somebody play two different characters that are so different, but have that same energy, but they're just like opposite sides. I don't know. Yeah. The first one I'm not that crazy about, but it's certainly a fun intro to the character, especially seeing the contrast between his scenes and, uh, Dr. Evil scenes. Um, like, <laughs> Let, let's talk about, first of all, we always like to talk with older movies. Do they hold up? Now, Austin mm -hmm. Powers is no role model. He's very much <laughs> a crazy womanizer. Um, yeah. Who always talk, like, but it, it, that's what makes him funny. Like, groovy, baby. Or like, mm -hmm. um, he definitely is the one who popularized the word shag. Um, but yeah, we have, we have some iconic Dr. Evil quotes. Um where he says, like, there's only one thing that I want, and that's sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads. Like, I just think this movie deserves credit among the three just because it's the introduction to these characters. Mm -hmm. But I do agree that this one isn't anywhere near the best. I also don't think Elizabeth Hurley holds up that well as uh, the love interest of Vanessa Kensington. I feel like she's just kind of, like, the joke kind of becomes old at one point of, like, him pining over him, her, sorry, him pining over her and her getting pissed off at him. Um, but obviously when you have like, I feel like these movies as a whole, but especially the, uh, this first one is a very like, uh, throw it at the wall and see if it sticks kind of comedic approach. So yeah. there's going to be some jokes that miss, but there are also going to be some moments where you just are chuckling or laughing really hard. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the ridiculous factor too, right? Like, a lot of the, a lot of spy movies like they don't necessarily do some like the same things, but they try to accomplish the same goal, which is like you think this is about to happen, but now nah, we about to go completely left, you know. So like that's just one thing I always like remember about like these types of movies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, anything <laughs> anything else we we have specifically about the first movie to say? Nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's just like a classic. <laughs> right yeah are you the same with that with that aj like this one isn't your favorite either yeah i mean it's just like none of them really my favorite i just i just kind of like watched it type thing like it was just yeah it was there i don't know i don't know when it comes to like these older movies like looking back at them now is like completely different you know so it's just it's kind of a toss-up it's kind of a toss-up 
For sure. Um, so yeah, let's. So in the second one, came out two years later. I also just figured out Mike Myers wrote all these movies. But basically, two years later, we got the spy who shagged me, and this one has the most <laughs> ridiculous premise because yeah, Doctor Evil in the last one he gets yanked out into space, then he comes back. And he goes back in time and steals Austin Powers' mojo. That's what he says. I, I've lost my mojo, mm-hmm. right? Like that's his whole thing. Mm-hmm. And now he has to, um, <laughs> he has to go back in time again to, um, to uh, to get his mojo back, which is now being put in a vial. Which I feel like that premise only works in Austin Powers, right? Like that is just so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and. Also, we this is the first one where, like you said, we got Mini Me. Which mm-hmm. can we talk a bit about Mini Me in this? Yeah, yeah, the memes, <laughs> the memes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think the Mini Me was just it was it was a surprise, but it was more so like this is the thing I'm going to talk about after like the movie <laughs> is over with you know like all like just him get like tossed around or just like not really saying anything but having like it's kind of it kind of reminds me like jack jack like from the incredibles like you never know what he's gonna do but it's just one of those things where it's like bro like this is like the perfect like gag character essentially this is also the first one speaking of gag characters where mike myers plays fat bastard which mm-hmm. um he he does the Scottish accent where he, that he then uh, that he then does for Shrek. Did y'all know? Mm-hmm. I feel like Fat Bastard. This movie I just learned was nominated for the Oscar for best makeup. I feel like that character <laughs> is probably why because you're putting him in so much. Yeah. That like is ahead of like his you can time. tell from the voice and from the mannerisms yeah. that it's him, but he just yeah. looks so much. And also, it's revealed that, like, Vanessa Kensington, who's the female lead in the last movie, was an evil robot the whole time, sent to spy on him, which that, I think, was yeah. really dumb. And then you have Heather Graham coming in as, um, I swear this is the name of the character, Felicity Shagwell. Um, right, right. So, again, do with that what you will. Um but again, I feel like between the two, the female leads are really disposable in the first two because um, they're just like there for the same purpose, unfortunately. Um, but in this one, I, I do really like, like you said, uh, Dr. Evil's entourage. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, you know, you have Rob Lowe, especially as one of the number twos, which mm-hmm. I don't even think I knew he was going to be in these. So I really enjoyed him in that. And um, yeah. Yeah, just overall. A, then, right, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say that's another thing that goes on there too. Like going back and watching these movies and seeing actors of today, back then, mm-hmm. it's always fun to watch. I'm like, dang, I forgot they was in this type thing. So like, I always, I always like whenever I'm going back and looking stuff like that, I was just like, dang, like, this is where they started type thing. So <laughs> yeah, and also this has. Such a rewatchable scene that they try to do it again in the third movie, but it's so priceless here where they have a montage of different innuendos. Like, um, like when they're saying, like, that looks like a giant Johnson, what's the status on this and that? And this goes on for yeah. a whole two minutes. <laughs> and this is the scene I, I don't remember. I think I might have watched this one, Spy Who Shagged Me on a Plane, even. And I'm just there mm-hmm. laughing out loud. I don't want this scene to end because this is the <laughs> peak of the movie, I think. That's a wild place to watch it, but I like, I like. <laughs> it's like the flight's about, a, you have like two hours left in the flight. You see a 90 minute movie. You just want to, yeah. and I hadn't seen it before. Nah, like the Austin Powers, I do remember like those are the type of movies that would be on planes for sure. So that makes, that makes perfect sense. But that's just funny. Like just thinking about you watching that on a plane is hilarious. Yeah, for sure. So again, this one, I think. The the humor is a lot more clever, probably, but I think again, like the conflict is still kind of disposable. Um, honestly, if y'all want, we can get into the third movie now because that's where I think stuff gets really like a lot more. In my, I think it's the worst received one, but I actually enjoy this one the most. So let's get into it. Yeah. Let's get into Gold Member, which is the final movie in the trilogy, and this 
is honestly the one that I enjoy the most. Mm -hmm. Um, because again, I might've seen this one on a flight, like downloaded on Netflix or something a couple of years ago. (laughs) Don't know why, but they're they're good plain movies. I don't know what to say. Like they're just actually, you don't need to use your brain, but anyway, this one has the craziest. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. This one has the craziest opening of all of them because, (laughs) because it's basically like within a movie and it's, Austin, the name of the movie is Austin Pussy. And mm-hmm. uh, and you got Tom Cruise's Austin Powers doing the whole British accent. You got Kevin Spacey as Dr. Evil, um, Gwyneth Paltrow, Danny yeah. DeVito, and then Quincy Jones doing the music. And then uh and then Steven Spielberg as the director. And he's like, mm-hmm. I don't remember what he says. Do you guys remember what he says? He says, like, shut up, Spielberg, or something. Uh, and then he dances yeah. through the Hollywood studio. Do you guys remember what he says to Spielberg? Um, Not off the dome. Not off the dome. I gotta, I'll have to see it again. <laughs> but it was such a know crazy opening about, that I didn't expect. And it was so like, because um, the whole overarching theme is there's going to be an Austin Powers movie now. And yeah. just to get that many celebrity cameos at the start of the movie must have been wild in the theater. And mm-hmm. I looked this up. Uh, do y'all remember the name of the character Gwyneth Paltrow cameos as during the Austin Pussy movie within the movie? The character is literally called <laughs> Yes, I, it's the most like Austin Powers like juvenile humor, Dixie Enormous, but I mean, it just doesn't <laughs> It just works, but like, like it just doesn't get old in in this kind of movie. And yeah. also, we mentioned at the start of this segment, Beyonce. I think she's by far the best of the three female leads that we had because she gets a lot more to do than the others. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah the the scene that, that and, uh, I always remember, like that just comes to my mind, is the freaking uh, seven point turn they try to do in that little cart. Because I was just like, yo, there's no way, there's no way you're gonna keep backing up and go over like this. Like, <laughs> it's hilarious, bro. Yeah. Poof. <laughs> That's black girl magic. That's black girl magic. <laughs> and it was like, it was an inspired choice because Beyonce, she hasn't had like the biggest career in acting, um, mm-hmm. but, but definitely like, I think she managed to do what an Austin Powers movie needed for mm-hmm. for this. Like she was, I I always think back at the. I recently rewatched this scene to prepare for this, where he, I think this is when he first meets her, and she's so mad that she doesn't want to look at him. And then Nathan Lane comes, is like one of the club goers, and she's mm-hmm. talking to him, but like looking away. So Nathan Lane's mouthing the words in real time to Austin, and she's like pissed off at him from what went down in their last meeting or whatever. And Nathan Lane just sells that little cameo so well. Um, yeah. Was it Nathan Lane? I'm pretty sure that was him. Yes, yes, it was him. He's credited as mysterious disco man. <laughs> <laughs> um and then the other scene that i really like in this one which i think really makes it stand out is first of all uh dr evil goes to prison pretty early on and now gold member is like the other threat um mm-hmm. trying to remember this best yes basically it's like he's in prison now, and now they have to take down Goldmember together, I guess. But there's this whole section where Dr. Evil's in prison, and he and Minnie Me have this crazy rap that Mike Myers yeah. just kills. You guys remember yeah. this? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was not expecting that at all. Because it's like... I think... It's it's like whenever yeah. you whenever you uh get those like little musical numbers, like, usually I'm not a fan of those, right? Because it's like, I'm not here for a musical. But... It's an Austin Powers movie, so you know it's not going to go great. <laughs> you kind of have to. Oh, no. Wow, I don't honestly, honestly, don't... Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's like, at that point, you get the gist of the movie, but it's like, they they kind of trying hard, like, <laughs> as far as, like, trying to make them, like, as as cohesive as possible, but it's like, 
we get the point, you know, like they, <laughs> they all the same person. Like, so it's just, it's just, uh, one of those choices that you make that it's just like, I mean, it might work for some people, but I don't know. It ain't really work for me. Yeah. I don't know. I, I do enjoy that. We had Michael Caine though, as, mm. um, as Austin Powers' dad, he was a really enjoyable addition. Also, one of the reasons that I enjoy this one more than the last two, probably. And, of course, we have uh, Scott Evil's Descent into Darkness. Because even though he hates his dad for being evil and abusive and has nothing wants nothing to do with him, the whole trilogy. Um, now he's, like, mad at, at Dr. Evil for becoming, like, good. So now he becomes... He wants to become the next Dr. Evil. Uh, mm. Which kind of stupid but it's yeah. not nearly the dumbest thing to happen in in this trilogy <laughs> so um so of course we have i just want i do want to shout out the ending though because in addition to um to what's his name to scott evil like turning into dr evil in the last scene and we did have fat bastard showing up in this one again it's like a sumo wrestler which was crazy but we had yeah. in the ending, um, Doctor, sorry, Scott Evil turning into the next Doctor Evil, shaving his head, trying to impersonate his dad. But we also had the film premiere at the end, which I think is enjoyable. Like if you're, if you're gonna mm -hmm. turn Austin Powers and Doctor Evil into friends, then it was, it was fun to like make them make a movie together. And yeah. uh, Fat Bastard was like uh, there at the premiere too. And then Mini Me is like talking to britney spears i think in the last scene trying to get her number um so honestly as an ending to the trilogy i kind of enjoy it and it's very fun like none of these movies are that crazy and i want to hear which of the three is you guys' favorite but that's why to me gold member stands out the most is because of like mm -hmm. the um, it's because it did something different than just having him chasing dr evil back in time or into space and plus they had the whole film thing and the different locations. I think that just stood out to me the most. And the whole prison section is amazing. Yeah. I think I think for me the third one is still my favorite. Just because it's the most yeah. the one I remember the most. Um, but it's it's also like the first one too, is just like it was just like ran it was so random. Like I was just like not expecting to see all that so um i i really think that as far as like full circle moments it's like that's how you cap a trilogy at the end like it's not so much as like a everybody's happy go lucky type thing but you got to see a real pro at least a real progression regardless of how you feel about the sun you know what i'm saying a real progression as far as like these two main mm -hmm. characters you know yeah, absolutely. I, again, that whole montage of uh, them like saying different innuendos around the world. I just think it's so priceless. Like, sure, it's stupid and juvenile, but just that it's just so funny. Like, what can you do? Yeah. All right. Any any closing thoughts about the Austin Powers movies before we move on? Because <laughs> I know a lot of people have grown up with these. Uh, so mm -hmm. interesting. I'd like to hear someone's perspective that did, because interesting that none of us did. But yeah, 